What's one word you would use to describe Warren? Uh, jack of all trades. Kind. Reliable. Compassionate. Friend. Understanding. We sat down with Warren to dig into his childhood and figure out how he became the man he is. Uh, my name is Warren Cash, uh, also known as Granddad, Dad, Grandpa. A few other names that we can't say here. <laughs> uh, I was born in Louisville, Kentucky in 1947, which makes me 73-ish. And uh, raised mostly in Jefferson County. Early life was uh, in Oldham County, just outside of Jefferson County, where Louisville is, in a place called Pee Wee Valley. You know, I was kind of like, I was uh, maybe a bit of a loner. I'd go out and do my old thing. So, what was your financial situation like as a kid? My father's family started a business that became very successful. And uh, my dad, his two brothers and one sister, Grandpa Cash owned the company and then the kids were all in it and owned shares of the company. And it became, we lived a privileged life. You know, we had a, uh, the things like uh, we had a house on the lake, and a boat and skis and cars and all those kinds of things. So we were not rich, but well off there. But as, the, as it went on and dad was not in the business anymore, uh, I felt like I, did, I could have gone into that business if I didn't want to. I wanted to go out on my own and make my living some other way. Because a family being in business together often makes a lot of hard feelings and I just didn't want to be part of it. So. What kind of company was it? They manufactured bedding machinery. Mm -hmm. That's machines to make mattresses. The machines that uh, sold the uh, patterns in the tops of the magazines and the machine that they used to, to sew that little edging around it. I did go to get to go on service calls sometimes with Dad uh, on those machineries. I'll tell you about this one trip we made to Texas, Arkansas, Texas. So we went to this plant. I remember going there. And I, we were standing outside for whatever reason. I looked over at this building and uh, I was shocked. It said, it said it had water fountains and it said white and colored. So the white people had their own, they, their own drinking fountain and the black folks had to drink out of this other one. And it was the same for the bathrooms. And um, that shocked me. I didn't know that there was anything, like, you know, I was, I'm not a kid, I'm not paying attention to the news, right? Uh, that there was anything like that. And there wasn't here in Louisville area. And uh, that, that made an impression on me. I thought it was, that was really weird, and really bad, that, 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 that they were so separated down there. Our family was not bigoted in any way, and the, what I heard about folks of different colors when I was um, being raised was they're the same as you, just a different color on the outside. Mm -hmm. And so that's the way I took it. When I saw that, I was like, I didn't even have any idea that kind of stuff was still that was ever going on as far as that goes. But it did it impress me. So what's one of your favorite childhood memories? There was uh, what looks like now a large mud uh, uh, puddle. At that time was a, what we called the pond. And um, so we would go back there and play and uh, uh, some things that happened that were unusual. My brother and I, uh, we found two pieces of wood that were shaped kind of like a boat. They were just pieces and then cut up like that. And uh, so we decided that we would build a boat. So we got a flat piece and put it on the bottom, nailed it on, and a piece that angled up that way. And then we put tar along the seams to waterproof it. And uh, the pond is probably 
not much bigger from here to the front front door. Uh, we put it in there, and we got in the boat. We started going across, and uh, about halfway across, bubbles started coming up in that tire. Then <laughs> <laughs> we're looking at the bubbles while we're getting going. And uh, the bubbles then they are like little fountains that sprung leaks all all the way over. <laughs> so we're we have our homemade paddles trying to get to the other side, and it sunk right in the middle of the pond. <laughs> yeah. So I thought they were going to die, you know. So we found out how deep the pond was. It was about like this. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, so uh, we gave up on boat building. What were you like in school growing up? Uh, mostly I just didn't want to be there. I wanted to be outside exploring the woods or building something or doing something. I just, um, I hated English. I didn't want to read books I didn't understand. Like poetry books and stuff like that so I looked out the window a lot and uh, but but it was a required subject her name was Miss Hendricks uh, so I you know fiddled through it came to class and I was failing and uh, I, I told I, late in the year because I had to have that to graduate I said what can I do now to uh, um, pass this course so that I can graduate and um, she said well you're a, you're a nice looking boy but you just got that hair hanging down like that all the time. <laughs> that was my Beatles haircut and uh, she, I said well she said I think if I was if you was to let me cut your hair I, you would get a passing grade really wow. <laughs> I said well sure go ahead I said he'll grow back <laughs> so she lifted it up and cut it Right, right at the care line, straight across. <laughs> and uh, um, I did pass because of the haircut, and uh, got to graduate. And that was nice of her, really. So, what did you decide to do after high school to make a living? It was, as life is often, it, it was an an accident. I, uh, like I said, I didn't want to be a part of the. Um, company, the family business, so I was going my own way. And we happened to move from Shively area where I went through uh, middle school through high school. My senior year, where Miss Hendricks was, we had moved to the east end of Louisville in the St. St. Matthews area. And um, when I got there, I saw the counselor about classes, and this is going into senior year, and he told me about vocational school, which I knew nothing about. And I said, well, that sounds like my kind of deal. I can go half a day uh, to regular school and then go to vocational school to learn something. He said, the only thing left is appliance repair. And I said, that anything's got to be better than regular school. <laughs> so I signed up for appliance repair. And uh, that's how I got into working in refrigeration. I did, I did, uh, I got into that business when I graduated from, right straight out of uh, vocational school. I went to work for Sears in their appliance repair shop. And eventually got into refrigeration and heating and air. And I did that for 40 some years. Going to school last class I had was the business machines and we got done early one day and the lady that was teaching it which I really liked her I can't remember her name uh, we were looking out the out in the hall my sister had her class sister Marion had her class right across the hall from us and and so I was looking out there I saw her talking to this girl and when she got home, I said, can you introduce me to that girl that, that you was talking to at the end of uh, class there? She said, well, well, yeah. And so she uh, 
short time later, brought her home to spend the night. And that's how your grand, grand Nana became your Nana. I remember that I brought your grandma over to the house. She was my best friend mm -hmm. at the time. And um, we were, I think we were juniors, maybe, maybe in 10th or 11th grade. And I introduced them to each other. And uh, from then on, it was like, you know, we did everything together. That's when we <laughs> met, we met by accident. So if, and she had just moved to that school. So we both happened to move to that school from different schools. We both happened to be right across the, to uh, the hall from each other at that time. And I happened to have a sister in there that could introduce her to me. So that's kind of meant to be, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. beautiful. Uh, what was the most valuable lesson that you've learned in your life thus far? You can take be break. honest, be, take responsibility. If you messed up, you say you messed up. would be, I believe, what he tried to teach us, which was to be honest and work hard. Um, he's taught us a lot. He's uh, very knowledgeable. Uh, been there anytime we needed to learn like uh, mechanical skills, especially cars and stuff. He's kind of taught all of us a little bit of something about that. So I know I'll take that with me yeah. through the rest of my life pretty much to appreciate the small things. Granddad definitely taught me patience. How to do brakes and replace car parts. He's taught me a lot about the heat and the furnace and the air conditioning system here at the house. <laughs> well, for one thing, it would be not to be too serious. What's your advice to everyone? Like if you could have a microphone that talked to everyone on the planet, what would you give them advice about? Uh, love your neighbor. Get along. Remember, we're sharing the world. You just here for a little while, and you gotta you gotta get along with the people. Let people be what they are. And be yourself, and be proud of yourself. What do you think the meaning of life is? I would say the the purpose of life. I guess we were put here to kind of take care of the world, weren't we? I think that's while we're here. We need to, yeah, like, we need, really need to work on uh, global warming, things like that, because it's going to be okay for me, but I don't know about your kids, you know? <laughs> so we need to work on uh, trying to better the world rather than tear it down. <laughs>